completely complete by Pete Berisco. A man is incomplete until he is married. After that, he is finished. My wife is not Jesus. But even after being raised by a pastor and graduating from seminary, I believe she was Jesus. You probably think your response is too really. I live quite contentedly with Jesus when I was single. But after we married, I expected Libby to do in my life what only Jesus is capable of doing. It was a recipe of disaster. Lie number three, your response will complete you. You can go on believing that fantasy if you want, but the truth is this, your response will not complete you, your response will complicate you. One of God's purposes in marriage is to use our response to reveal our flesh patterns, self selfishness and sin. If you are looking for true love and affirmation, only Christ will complete you. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth de derives its name. I pray that out of his uh, glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. As we come to grips with the love of Christ, we find fulfillment in Him and then we get to delight in the relationships we have been given. All I can say is that it works for Libya and me. When we walk in the spirit rather than the flesh, we really see Jesus as our answer, Jesus as our power, Jesus as our strength, and Jesus as our love. When we see ourselves as completed in, G in Christ, all the pressure is lifted off one another, and we actually start lighting each other. Father, show me where I am depending on others to complete me rather than receiving my completeness in Christ. Refocus the expectations I place on others to complete me. I know I was designed to be filled by you. Amen. is faithful 
and let us consider how we may spur and one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. You need that, I need that, we need that. It's a lie to think otherwise. It's called loving biblical community. What is going on in your key relationships? What's up in your marriage? Are you trying to handle it on your own? If you want to go it alone, I suppose you can try, but why? Maybe it's time to flush some pride and ego and get connected like God designed it. God, I accept that I am not an island. I need you. I need what you provide through others when things are tough. I confess my prideful, independent flesh patterns. Make me willing to accept your grace, wisdom, and support through others. Show me whom you want me to connect with today. Amen. Here's what's true about you and prayer. If the spiritual life be healthy under the full power of the Holy Spirit, praying without ceasing will be natural. It's difficult to see the forest through the trees. We are often so absorbed with the details that we never really consider the big picture. It even happens with prayer thanks to overwhelming expectations and unspoken assumptions. The biggest assumption is that we are always supposed to pray more than we do. If you don't pray a lot, you obviously aren't serious about God, right? And if more people like you would just pray more, then our world and our nation wouldn't be railing out of control, right? Certain scriptures only seem to fuel the struggle. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Add everything together and you might feel like a first class spiritual loser. Or maybe you try to dodge it by saying, I don't have the gift of prayer. What is the problem here? Is God setting you up for failure and condemnation? Not at all. The problem is much more fundamental that, than that. Most of our tradition miss the pure, simple, liberating essence of prayer. Prayer is an intimate conversation with the one who passionately loves you and lives in you raise for a moment if you can everything you think you know about that what prayer is what is the sounds like and how often you are supposed to do it consider again our simple definition really think about what prayer is and what prayer is not what what is the big picture can you see the forest of prayer through the trees of your assumptions. Holy Spirit, I need your help here. I am excited about the opportunity to pray without ceasing, using all kinds of prayers and requests. Right now, begin to open my mind to the possibilities of intimate conversation with you, the one who passionately loves and lives inside me. Amen. Burning Your Bridges by Pastor Pete Berisco. Some people ask the secret of our long marriage. We take time to go to a restaurant two times a week. A little candlelight dinner, some music and dancing. She goes Tuesdays, I go Fridays. Winning a war takes devoted com commitment to a cause. When an army bears a bridge behind them on their way to a battle, they are cutting off their only possibility of retreat, fully committing to fight for victory, even to the point of death. Today, it's time to burn down a bridge that some people keep as an out in their marriage. Life 5. Devotion. 
the distractions to take away con concentration from your relationship. If that little idea is in the back of your mind, it's killing your marriage guarantee. Now there are allowances in the scripture for divorce in extreme circumstances. Matthew 5, part 32. Jesus said, except for sexual immorality, he made an exception for people whose spouses were acting on sexually. In some of those cases, you can move to forward with divorce. 1 Corinthians 7, part 12 to 14. If you become a believer and your spouse is a non believer, remains a non believer, and they leave. Thank you. 
this lie is really just a sub lie of one of Satan's other favorite lies that easy is better than hard. Honestly, easy is seldom better than hard. The truth is that marriage is one of God's best ideas and a good marriage is an inexpressible joy. Hard work, yes, but it's worth it. From the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things and the work of their hands brings them reward. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. There are three things that are too amazing for me, four that I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way of a sheep on the high seas, and the way of a man with a young woman. A wife of noble character can, who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. I am asking you to make a new marriage with the spouse you promised to stay with. Engage each other fully to restore and build the marriage that God has for you. As he works in you, look at how you are changing into God's image with your spouse. It will never be perfect, but now know that you are in God's will and that your marriage is worth every bit. God, renew my mind according to your truth. Take my worn out heart and straighten it. I cannot fix this on my own, so I ask you to be at work in my mar married life. Use it all, good and bad, to conform me to, uh, to your son and give me the conviction that is, it is worth it. Amen. Battling for truth in your marriage by Pastor Pete Berisco. When you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Five years ago, my wife and I realized that we disliked each other. We couldn't get divorced, but we knew we couldn't stay where we were either. Paul learned the lesson of contentment in ex extenuating circumstances. That's because his joy came from living according to the truth rather than buying into lies. It's the same for you and your marriage. Remember, the secret of marriage is two people walking in the spirit, loving one another. Let's do something about that, following the pattern Paul laid out in Romans 12, part 1 to 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For each of the eight marriage lies we have uncovered, there is solid biblical truth of which we can be certain. Marriage is not irrelevant, it's divine, timeless, and significant. Marriage isn't the only way to be happy. Singleness is a gift to cherish or a season to enjoy. Your spouse will not complete you, only Christ can. You too can't handle marriage on your own. You need outside help. Divorce is not an option. Only in extreme circumstances can marriage be dissolved. Divorce isn't better for your children. Married parents are far better for your children. Your marriage is never hopeless. God offers hope and restoration. 